25%. It's an F, a step at which most people would make a drastic change in what they're doing. So I'm questioning why is the standard any different for the American justice system? The United States has long been in the game of being the best at we, everything we can be. The best military, the biggest economic power in the world, and the most freedom. However, this lofty goal often leads us to forget the things that we aren't so good at or that we can improve on, like the lack of function in our current justice system. I encourage you today to open your mind about the improvements that we can make in this justice system to make it function better for society. One of the biggest misconceptions is that tradition is always the best thing to do. We've been doing essentially the same thing in our justice system for 250 years with no change. However, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't question it. One of the other biggest misconceptions about the justice system is that prison is punishment. According to psychological definitions, punishment is any environmental change, in this case prison, that makes an event, in this case crime, less likely to occur after the environmental change is put into effect. However, the current recidivism rates, according to the National Institute of Justice Statistics, is right around 75%, which means that five years after being let out of prison, 75% of offenders will go back to prison. That's a failure rate of 75%. Another huge misconception about our system is that harsher punishments will deter criminality. When criminologists look at deterrence theories, we look at three elements. Certainty, swiftness, and severity. While most people think, in accordance with the Get Tough movement on crime, that severity will make it less likely that people will commit crime, they'll be scared of the harsher punishment. In fact, the most certain ele or the most effective element in, these, in this triad is actually certainty. Think about it. You're less likely to rob the bank down the street if they just put in six state-of-the-art security cameras than if the legislature just enacted a harsher punishment for that same crime. The reason is simple. Most people don't know what the punishment is for most crimes. We simply know that it's illegal, but we don't know what the punishment is if we actually do it. I'll tell you, the reason these systems don't work is because they don't go into accordance with the basic functions of the human mind. Social learning theorists say that we are learned and socialized into behavior by those that we associate most with which is why when you were a little kid, your mom told you not to hang out with the people that got in trouble at school. So when we put criminals in, hardened criminals in the same place as new criminals, young people, first-time offenders, those first-time offenders will learn the values and antisocial norms associated with those hardened criminals' lifestyle. We're teaching them that this is okay and this is how you should be um, acting in society. Also with the theories, labeling theorists say that after you're out of prison, the simple label of being a criminal will also make you more likely to commit crime. This label makes you conform to the label that's put on you, whether you call someone dumb, whether you call someone ugly, whether you call someone a criminal, when they hear that over and over, they're going to eventually conform to that behavior that's associated with that label. The next problem in the system is this chart, the poverty crime cycle. When you grow up in poverty, you're more likely to commit crime. The explanations for that vary between who you ask. Strain theorists would say the stress and strain of growing up in poverty makes you more likely to commit crime. Social learning theorists would say that people that live in these high poverty areas are more likely to be exposed to antisocial values and norms, making them more likely to commit crime. This poverty, when someone then commits crime and leads to prison, on the outside, the unemployment is then caused by that stigma that comes with the labeling theory of being a criminal. So the cycle will continue and continue generationally as that unemployment leads to more poverty. However, this generational cycle then leads to what we call poverty concentration, which is the idea that the few people that are lucky enough to beat the odds and get out of the impoverished neighborhoods, when they do eventually leave, they leave that neighborhood more concentrated with poverty than they started with because those people are no longer there to balance that out. Another problem is that ours, like we discussed earlier, reinforcement works better. Reinforcement is a more strong motivator to change your behavior, which means humans work better with rewards versus punishment. We have a large lack of re reward programs in our prisons. And I'm not saying that we should reward everyone for congrats you got up on time today. That's not realistic. However, 
when we're giving the same outcome to someone who sits in prison for five years and does absolutely nothing, with the person who goes to prison and gets their GED or learns a new skill, there's no motivation for that person who's gonna do nothing to actually get better. They're going to continue to sit there the easy way out and not get better, which is going to continue them in this cycle. So essentially our system is set up based on the way the human mind functions to lead to failure after they're released. So the problem then comes with how, why does this matter to you? Because statistically, you all are the least likely to commit crime in the sense that you are receiving or have already received a higher education, which means you're socialized with people that do conform to social values that are respected by the general public. I'll tell you why it matters. Because it's your tax dollars that are going into the system. The federal government estimated that we spent $80 billion in 2016 just to get the prison system to function. That doesn't take into account the social factors that are also changed by this. So the effects of growing up in a one-parent household or the lost revenue in the economy because they're unable to work. However, community-based programs on research, if we put educational systems in the prisons, yes, they cost about $1,500, give or take, to implement. However, on the on the long run, they save about $9,000 in recidivism rates. So it's more economically smart to invest in the front end than it is to then try to control it in the back end. Which leads me to one of our solutions. How do we fix this? The one of the most popular models right now is what we call the public health model. And just like we do in the public health care system, we work on preventative measures instead of controlling it after. And our preventative measures are vaccines. That's why we don't have things like polio anymore and chicken pox are really rare and we tend not to get the flu as often as we would if we didn't have vaccines. Instead of saying, you got the flu, we're gonna put you in a bubble so you don't s spread it to everyone, we're gonna say, let's give you a vaccine to avoid you getting it in the first place or at least lessening your chances. So why don't we apply this model to the justice system? We invest on the front end, like in education in impoverished communities, to lessen those children's likely to ever get involved in the system in the first place. Yes, it costs more money on the front end, but it saves money in the long run, just like it does with the preventative healthcare system. These programs that I study in my class here called Crime Prevention and Policy, we look at a website called crimesolutions.gov, which is strict goal is to look at and evaluate programs all over the country. I looked at 63 programs that this website had rated as effective that are all over the country in mostly schools and communities, and almost all of them were community-based programs for children. So giving these kids someone in the community as a role model or something to stick to in the community rather than putting them in prison after it's already done. You give them a stake in the community, someone to be proud of them, like their parents or a mentor, in order to avoid the problems in the long run. Now there's no guarantee that this works, and I am very realistic that there are some people that this can't help. There's hardened chronic offenders that this will never help and they'll always be the way they are. However, I do think the majority of people can be rehabilitated if we are given them the right tools for after they're finished with this chapter in their life. So my goal today was to open your eyes to the problems with this traditional system that we have, even though it is 250 years old. Just because something is a tradition does not mean that it can't be questioned and can't be improved. And I challenge you to question things that you think are tradition or that you can't change simply because they're too old to be changed. Thank you.